Hey besties, if I could get a pound for the number of times people have asked me about accommodation in the University of Lincoln, I would have been a millionaire by now. This is a video a lot of you want to hear about and in this video, I'm going to be telling you the situation with respect to accommodation in Lincoln. Not only that, I would give you some tips on how to easily secure accommodation in Lincoln. If you are watching me for the first time, my name is Ada and I'm also known as The Legal Pepe. This is an amazing community on relocation and lifestyle that you should stay subscribed to. I remember the first message I got on accommodation. This Bessie was in the UK and she was stranded mainly because she did not make any provision for accommodation. And yes, let me just blame all the relocation YouTubers, including me, because we talk about a lot of things concerning relocation, but I don't think lots of people hammer it in people's head about the fact that it is not easy to get accommodation as an international student. So this is me telling you that the same energy that you are using to plan for your visa, proof of funds, use even times two of that energy to plan for accommodation for some reason people think they can leave their countries come to the uk and they would always find a place to stay but no the uk is not like that would you sleep under the bridge so accommodation is such an important part of your relocation journey i belong to lots of whatsapp groups and i am tired of seeing people being stranded in the uk don't get me wrong, it is understandable to be stranded in a place, so it could be that something happened and in that case, that is like an emergency situation. So something happened and you're stranded and yeah, it's okay to seek for help. But I have a problem with people that would leave their countries and make no plans for accommodation, then come here, end up being stranded, at last you start begging anyone to accommodate you. And when you put yourself in such a situation like that, you can easily fall prey to bad people. And because you are here for the first time, people can easily take advantage of you. So besties, don't let that be you. Now, if you are in the University of Lincoln, how is accommodation? I would group this in three parts. If you are single, stay on one line. If you are married without kids, stay on the second line. And if you are married with kids, stay on the third line. If you are single, there is no problem for you. <laughs> University of Lincoln will gladly accommodate you. If you are single, I would advise you to go for a student accommodation. Although you may think it is expensive compared to being off campus, but it is actually cheaper if you calculate it properly because you don't have to pay in pounds. You can actually pay your accommodation using Form A and that is very affordable. Not only that, in the student accommodation, all bills are inclusive, so you don't pay a dime extra. I know that there are some places off campus that will tell you all bills inclusive, but what they will not tell you is that all bills are inclusive, but there is a cap. So if you go above that cap, you get charged. But in student accommodation, all bills are truly inclusive. And in Lincoln, there are various student accommodations so you can pick from. And one beautiful thing about being in student accommodation is that you only get to pay a deposit of £49. Especially if you apply early, you just pay that. Then you decide how you want to pay your fee either monthly or quarterly and it's not like your landlord of campus that if you default they can throw you out but no you are in state accommodation because they know that you cannot get your certificate without paying all your debts so you must pay whether you like it or yes so that's it if you're single also, you can consider going off campus and there are various apartments. I would say you should set your budget to at least £350 per month. You may get for £300, you may get higher than that or even lesser than that. But the beautiful thing about being a single person is if you have no issues with sharing, you would get cheaper accommodations that you can share kitchen 
or share toilets depending on what you are comfortable sharing or you can even have roommates and split the bills so you can say that as a single person you have no problem for once there is justice for single people now let's move over to married people without kids this category is also for married people that have kids but they are not coming to the uk with their kids so in this analogy you have no kids if you are married without kids your situation is still manageable because there are some student accommodation that you are entitled to so before in the university of lincoln if you are married you don't get to stay in the student accommodation but i think last year a lot of married students actually complained to the school and they heard their cries and now if you don't have kids then you can actually stay in the student accommodation but of course not all student accommodations but some so in that situation you will still stay in the school accommodation but you would pay higher than what a single person would pay if you are in this category you can also go off campus and because you don't have kids you won't have lots of challenges now to the final group of people you are married you have kids and you are here with kids the truth is the university of lincoln has no accommodation for you you cannot come into a student accommodation with your kids and that's so sad because there are lots of dependents that have children and i remember someone saying that wait though the school want them to throw away their kids i don't know the answer to that but the truth is right now the school has made no provision for you I'll just tell you the truth as it is. I don't know if by next year, someone else will be able to clamor for school to now accommodate you. But for now, you can't stay in student accommodation. Now, speaking of staying off campus, of course, that is possible. But the reality is that the accommodation is very, very, very limited for people with children. I remember when I was talking about jobs, if you've not watched that video, I would link it up. And I mentioned the fact that there are jobs, but there are lots of people competing for those jobs. Now for accommodation, we don't even have lots of accommodation and there is competition. So it's very, very hard for a family to get accommodation in Lincoln as an international student. Of course, there are families that have gotten accommodation but it is hard and most people that i know with families live around lincoln that should not be something that would make your heart cut because there are still options the beautiful thing is there are places like newark nottingham sleaford i know lots of my cosmates that live around those places and they love those places they have no issues with those places for the purpose of those people that have not come to the uk i'm going to show you how much it will cost to move from lincoln to all of these neighboring places so you can calculate the financial implications and also if you don't have a lot of classes then you will have no issues with it but where you would have an issue is if in your course your class is like every day and of course it's going to be very stressful to be commuting now the thing is, if you have children, you have to realize that the way you were living when you were in your home country will drastically change. In this place, in fact, when it comes to accommodation, you cannot put your children in just any how kind of accommodation. You have to put your kids in the proper kind of accommodation, be fitting for the number of children that you have. I know you've heard lots of stories about how UK government took children from parents in court <laughs> and accommodation can be an issue because in the uk they do not joke with their children once your child is here your child is government property literally so you have to provide the adequate housing for your child i know someone that left nigeria with no plans for accommodation and the bad thing is this person has children and the person thought mm, they would easily get accommodation and guess what they were shocked because 
there is always this racial profiling and you being an international person makes it difficult. And if you think you want to rely on Airbnb or hotels, unless you are very, very rich, and even if you are, why waste money like that? Because you may end up staying there for a long time. That's the reality. And that's why I would always advise you, as you are planning for your visa, plan for your accommodation. From when you are in your home country, start planning for accommodation. And there are various places to get those things. If you are a student or you want straight accommodation, you can just go online on Lincoln website and you'll get direction on how to apply for accommodation. But if you're thinking of getting a place off campus, you would have to make use of housing sites, places like spare room, gum tree. It may also be useful if you have the contact of letting agents. And one great way of getting those contacts is by you being in contact with lots of Lincoln students. There are WhatsApp groups, a Telegram group. You can just go there and ask for a letting agent. I've had someone ask me to help them get an apartment. And because I am not a letting agent, that was not something I could do for the person. Because apart from viewing those apartments online, I have no experience about renting an apartment off campus. But let me give you one easy hack. If you have children and you're wondering how you would cope your accommodation, it may be helpful for one person that is a student to come first. When you come first, it makes it easier for your family. It is better for you to come first than for you to pack everybody and you end up being stranded. So if you've still not been able to secure accommodation, one person can come first. And the hack is that when you come first, you can come as a single person. So you can easily get accommodation as a single person, whether you want to stay off campus or wherever. And whilst you are here, you would be on the lookout for accommodation. The thing about this accommodation is, it is easier for you that needs the accommodation or if you employ the services of a letting agent to get accommodation that depending on someone that is here and most likely would have their own schedule to start looking at the apartments for you because some of these viewings is not just in one day you will keep going you will keep viewing and that is something that a letting agent or yourself can easily do so when you are thinking of getting an accommodation there are three things i think are important for you to consider the first thing to consider is your budget i've had people say they want an apartment for a very ridiculous price because most likely they are converting the money to naira for instance when i said that you can get an apartment for like 350 pounds as a student per month I'm sure someone would have calculated 350 times in Naira to understand that the amount that people pay per month here is what some people pay per year in their home country. But don't make that mistake because converting would make you <laughs> sleep under the bridge because nobody converts here. You are going to be earning in pounds. So you're not going to be converting in Naira. So it's important to have a budget and your budget will be dependent on a lot of factors. If you don't have so much money, then of course you can go for shared apartment or with roommates. But if you have kids, your budget definitely has to be bigger than a single person's budget. The next thing to consider is the kind of apartment you want. Do you want an ensuite? Do you want a studio apartment or a two bedroom or three bedroom flat? It just depends on you and various other factors. If you have kids, of course you will know that you can't get a suite and depending on the number of your children, you will have to get like two bedroom or even three bedroom apartments. And the final thing to consider is proximity to school. Some people may not care about this, but people like me, I don't like working, so I care about it. If you want a place that is close to school, of course, get student accommodation. 
or there are still places of campus that are close to school there are accommodations in places like high street which is like a famous street in school there are places around and i think that if you're coming with your family and you have children and you will really want to stay in lincoln it may be helpful to consider places in lincoln that are not close to school because you would have more options in those places of course you may need to get a car as that may make transportation easier but in case you don't have a car there is no problem the train stations work the bus stations work but it ultimately depends on where you are going to stay in particular because some places have better transportation system than others if you however have an option of a place close to school and a place far from school of course we know that the place close to school would most likely be more expensive than the other place i want you to also consider your transportation your feeding in case your classes are spaced out and various other little things so put those into consideration when making your decision before i end this video for couples with children there are some rules that may be binding to you I don't know about the enforcement of these rules but these are just general rules when you have children number one children of different sexes should not stay in the same room once they are above 12 years so if you have like a boy and a girl and they are like 13 14 they are not supposed to stay in the same room and I'm using suppose because these are the rules but I don't know about the enforcement also the rule to knowing the number of rooms you should get is two people to one room so that's the rule so let's say you have one child that means you are three people so you are two people mother and father and one child so you people are supposed to have two rooms that is the general rule and of course if you have more kids and they are of different sexes and they are above the age of 12 you can do the math so yeah this is just the general rule in conclusion i forgot to add that this third category of parents with children would also include single moms or single dads the most important thing is you have children and that just changes the dynamic so let's assume that you are a single mom you are not in the same category of a single girl without children and that changes the dynamic of the kind of apartment that you can be in i hope this video has helped someone if it has let me know in the comment section let me also appreciate you my besties i love the fact that you always engage with my content if you watch up till now then i would like you to watch the video i made on the r word i'll be linking it up here and if you've not subscribed by now <laughs> what are you waiting for <laughs> please hit the subscribe button like this video drop your comments and i'm going to be seeing you in my next one. Bye guys!